Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 104. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. One of my biggest bugbears, right? Pe people on the internet that spread fake news, but specifically fake news about sites like Facebook and that. So, a lot of people, right, that complain about, oh no, Facebook has my data. Oh no. I hate to break it to you, but the data that Facebook holds on you that has an account that's signed up, companies like Google track that without you even having to be signed up to their websites. They track that data no matter what. Like, I'm not some government conspiracist that's like, oh, they're all tracking you. Yes, they're tracking you. But what are they going to do about it? The people that watch themselves on the internet to be careful because they don't want to get tracked by the government are still being tracked and you've not heard any bad stories about them getting fucked over the government tracks everything facebook tracks everything google tracks everything youtube tracks everything the internet is tracked by all these companies you think half of the internet, right, is run by Google, the other half of the internet is run by Amazon, and it's ridiculous. Like, the amount of services that Google runs is unreal. They run a good hundred different services. It's crazy, like Gmail. Microsoft owns a large portion of the internet as well. They've got Office, Teams, stuff like that. But Amazon has Amazon Web Services. So a lot of apps out there are actually run off of Amazon Web Services. Uh, I think... A, yeah, this will, this will be my last stream, sure. No, I've, I've already mentioned this before. I've not been cancelled for it. Um, Reddit is a good one. I believe Reddit is run on Amazon Web Services because the last time Amazon went down, Reddit went down as well. So, everyone sort of exploded on the internet and was like, Reddit's down. No, Reddit's not down. Amazon is down. Which then causes Reddit to be down, but Amazon basically runs Reddit. I'm pretty sure anyways. Or they run a large majority of it. It's like anything to do with, like, a, a very large proportion of the internet is run off of Amazon Web Services. So you think, you go on Reddit, you're giving your data to Amazon as well. As soon as you go on Reddit. <laughs> it is a, um... Nah, it's not going to be my last stream. If basic knowledge, people just don't research and, like, learn about this stuff. They just assume that companies are tracking your data and that, ooh, that's bad. Even if you're an incognito, here's, here's the problem, right? People think that going onto incognito or using a VPN and whatnot will mean that companies can't track your data. Well, newsflash, that's not how it works. A VPN just encrypts the traffic going between. Oh yeah, Twitch is run by Amazon. So if Amazon Web Services goes down, Twitch goes down as well. So you think, people talking on Twitch, their data is being given to Amazon. Straight away. As soon as you're talking on Twitch, as soon as you load Twitch on your web browser... They have information about you straight away. 
I never said I'm insulting Amazon. I never said it's bad that they have your data. Because I'm... What's the word for it? Realist isn't the word. I have common sense. I realise by using the internet, my data is going to be everywhere on the internet. So why the fuck am I going to get involved in, like... Oh no, Amazon has my data, Facebook has my data, I must delete my accounts. No, the easiest way for them to not have your data is by not going near any electrical device. The internet is that. An interconnected network of devices. Every device can connect to any device. That's how the internet works. So the only people... I'm about to upset some people here. Oh uh, yeah, the timer's off. But the timer was on for quite some time anyways. During the break between this last one and the next one. Um. Yeah, like... The entire internet is just that. It's an interconnected network of devices. So... Don't use a smartphone or anything like that if you're worried about your data. But as soon as you say, right, you're not allowed Facebook, you're not allowed your iPhone, your iPad, people will be like, oh, but... Huh? Why? But Apple says that my data is secure if I use it. Bullshit, do they? <laughs> That's the one thing that bugs me about Apple. Like, I don't have a problem with them having your data. And anything like that. Because that is a risk of being on the internet. Your data is everywhere. It doesn't matter. But to advertise something as being pro secure and all that. It's, it's not secure. Don't buy an iPhone because they say, oh, it protects your data. No, it fucking doesn't. Uh, and as for a VPN, that doesn't really protect your data. That just means that your traffic is encrypted. Facebook still sees, on their end, all your data, still. Because otherwise, how would a VPN work if Facebook couldn't understand what your computer was doing? It gets encrypted from your computer to their server, and then from their server and beyond, it's unencrypted again. I'm not going to leave the iPhone alone if they're going to lie about it. <laughs> like, it, 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 it's true. They talk about privacy, but the privacy stuff is just a marketing tool. So that people can think, oh yeah, iPhones are more secure than Androids. No, they're not. Your data is still as vulnerable... On an iPhone as they are on an Android phone. There was a period where iPhones were quite easily hackable. But uh, that was down more to incompatibility with other devices that made it that iPhones would crash. And then it would just freeze up and you had a backdoor access to it. So that was a very tough time for Apple. But they fixed it, so props to them. But again, like, conspiracy theorists will always do that. They'll make a conspiracy with absolutely no evidence and just say, Oh yeah, Facebook's tracking your data. Like, Facebook, as a company, with their data is just as dangerous as YouTube and Amazon. Just as dangerous. Which isn't that dangerous. You know, Amazon, we're all fine with giving them our data. We're all fine with giving YouTube our data. Why, for some reason, do we hate Facebook? Makes no sense. That's why I think Facebook is an alright company. Because who cares? Your data is out there anyways. And the fact is, a lot of this data is to make sure that stuff is targeted towards you. 
so that you can use the internet for stuff that you want to use it for. And sure, you get adverts, but those adverts are aimed towards you. Stuff that you buy. And they do that deliberately so that you can find stuff that you might want. If you end up buying it and end up spending all your money on it, that's a you problem for not having control of your own money. Granted, I have that exact same problem. That's why I'm picking it out. But that's a you problem, not the internet's problem. A lot of people do like to shift blame for their own problems onto someone else or something else. <laughs> it's like Oculus as well. When people, when Facebook bought Oculus, everyone was like, no, everyone's gonna, my data is gonna be tracked. Like, your data was already tracked beforehand. I mean, shit, if you use something like VR chat, and this is gonna be quite, uh, quite hits home with some people in my chat. Using VR chat is like the easiest way for people to get your data. It's even easier for people to get your data through VR chat than anything like Facebook or Instagram or any of that stuff. So if you use VR chat, you can you legally are not allowed to complain about Facebook or Oculus at all cuz otherwise you just sound like an absolute moron. On YouTube the I mean, I literally will not lose any subscribers other than inactive accounts that just aren't being used anymore. I still gotta get pushed into recommended, which by the way, people on Twitch, start liking some of my YouTube stuff, it really does help. I'm not gonna lose my subs, you guys don't, don't know how the internet works. <laughs> it's not quite that easy. Like, again, I have no problem. Like, I, I don't even understand why you think that I'm going to get, like, deplatformed because I agree with the big tech companies. Like, why would I get deplatformed if I'm saying what YouTube and Facebook and that are doing are fine? Why would I get deplatformed? That makes no sense. Because I'm pointing out public information, I'm going to get deplatformed. That also doesn't make sense. Common knowledge, common sense. Does that get you deplatformed now? Because if it does, then sure, there's going to be a lot of people that get deplatformed. If we're going to have people without common sense, then yeah, I suppose. Might get deplatformed. Because I, along with about 50% of the Earth, only have common sense now, so... 50% of the Earth is going to get deplatformed if we're not allowed to have common sense on the internet anymore. To be fair, common sense isn't all that common sense. <laughs> all the basic white bitches will cancel you. <laughs> the people that these comments don't actually affect at all will come and cancel me. Great. Charming. <laughs> Charming. But yeah, let's get back to the topic of discussion. Like... Social media as a whole is... Like, the internet as a whole. You know, a lot of companies on their websites use things like Google Analytics to tell where their audience is coming from. So, um, I've made a couple of websites um, that you can add Google Analytics to. And anytime anyone uses that website, it does not ask for permission, but it will track and find out where that person is viewed from. Granted, it very rare like, Google will not give people an exact address, but who knows if Google has your exact address? They probably do. By the time you look at it. It is a, um... 
What's it called? It's just a, a fact of the internet. Like, um, when I had my stream team thing, we had a website and we had Google Analytics on that website. So every time someone went on it, you could tell exactly what pages they were looking at, what links they had clicked on, everything. All that information gets tracked. Mm. As soon as you go on a website, they know where you're accessing it from. It's what an IP address is. That along with, um, what's it called? All the other information, like, obviously IP address isn't the only thing. There's like four or five different bits of information they need. I can't remember what they are exactly. But there are multiple different bits of information that's actually needed to w physically pinpoint the location of a specific device. But for them to do that, they sort of need that information so that they know where to send the data to, otherwise you can't access the fucking website. Like, that's, that's another point that confuses me. People that are like, Oh, but I don't want Facebook tracking my data, like, where I... Oh my god, he's just fucking been there. Alright. More places for me. People that are like, I don't want Facebook to know where I live. Because they'll track me. Like, well, where the fuck do you want them to send the videos that you watch then? Do you want them to send them to Gareth 17 miles away? Like, where the fuck do you want them to send that video that you're asking to watch? Because they need to know somehow where they've got to send it to. They can't just m send it to every device and hope that it's come to the right one. Like, it's that kind of common sense that just really fucking annoys me with the world. Like, common sense is just uncommon. Oh, they're tracking my... my they're tracking my search history. Well, yeah, because you've accessed their website. They're going to know you've searched that thing because you've been on their site. Duh. Fucking idiot. But it's, it's stuff like that. That people then go, oh, it's bad that they've got this data. Well, don't go on their fucking site then, you prick. It's not that hard. You triangulate your location between cell towers. Yeah, exactly. Like they work out your location depending on signal strength between different different towers. But you think if that didn't happen, the same people that are complaining about companies and phone providers tracking you are also the same people that would be begging for 911 to work out where you are when your leg's fallen off because you've been hit by a car in the middle of nowhere. Like, it's... It's fucking... Some people are just idiots. <laughs> Straight up idiots. What do you mean, how did the clip go up for? Which one? Well, you probably watched it a couple of times, sending it to me. I watched it, and Fallen probably watched it as well. <laughs> Do you want to know a funny thing? I've never broken a bone. <laughs> Touch wood. I've lived 20 years of my life without breaking a bone, which is a lot longer than most people's non-bone-breaking streaks, so... Most people at the age of 20, their streak is not 20 years without breaking a bone. So, I think I'm winning. How am I an old man? Because I'm 20. That doesn't make me an old man. Uh, but in comparison to you, yeah, I might be an old man. But just remember, as soon as anyone says that I'm 20, 
in my chat, I'll be like, Ha, you're fucking old now, you prick. <laughs> I'll remember it. Fuck off, taught. Taught. <laughs> Someone's forgotten how to use a keyboard. <laughs> Aaron, listen to your elders. Oh, yeah, that was a thing that we were talking about. The older generation don't understand... Because of how, like, quick the world has been developing over the past 50 years. Like, the older generation really don't... Can't be classed as wise anymore because they're just not wise. Like, our wisest people in the world right now are probably 30 to 40 year olds. They're probably our wise generation now. And that will be like that for a long time. Because they're people that have grown up with the changing world. And have the experience of the world changing. Whilst also having the experience. But by the time they get to like 50, 60 or 70. The world will have changed too much that their wise nature just won't apply anymore. Like, genuinely, I think anyone above the age of 40 isn't wise. They're just old. Like, I'll even admit, when I'm older, people that are over the age of 40, they can live their life by all means, but they ain't wise. To be fair, when I get to 40, I'll be like, I'm the wise fucker here! But, like, I, even now, I really do believe, like, 30 to 40 is, like, the peak of wiseness in the modern day. Like, a 70, 80-year-old man just... Their wiseness just doesn't apply anymore. It just doesn't apply to the modern generation. Not at all. Get Ben now. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's why I Even though I think it's better that we've got someone like Rishi Sunak Who's much younger Like As Prime Minister I still think he's too old to be Prime Minister I think we need younger people In politics Because these people are the people that The decisions actually affect Like a lot of younger people get affected by Politicians decisions Especially in America <laughs> See, that's a funny joke, Fallen. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Funny joke from American. You're better than 95% of other Americans. You're in the top 5%. Woohoo! <laughs> but yeah, I, I really believe like younger politicians should exist. Like, obviously not like, oh, we shouldn't be having, like, a 20-year-old in politics because it's not long enough in the adult world. But someone that's, like, between 30 and 40 that's had, like, 10 years of experience in politics to make decisions that's going to affect the people that are 10 years younger than them. Yeah. Have them in politics. They should be in politics, not the old people that politics doesn't affect anymore. You know, it makes sense. Common sense would tell you that, but it's not common anymore. To, to pretend. I'm really not sure about uh, the music video, but have a listen to the lyrics. Have a listen to this first line, and it's just so true. Because this song came out 10 years ago. Fuck. I forgot it doesn't drop there. <laughs> Give it a minute. <laughs> it's going to drop after this bar.
<laughs> so the first lyric, I, I was gonna stop talking when the song dropped, you fucking idiot. <laughs> so the first lyric literally says, if we don't kill ourselves, we'll be the leaders of a messed up generation. 10 years later, look at the world. Like this is literally the song that predicted the world's downfall. <laughs> it's just such a such an ironic song. Beep beep. The Simpsons and predicting things is really strange. But to be fair, I, I don't know whether, because The Simpsons has so many episodes that maybe they just end up predicting things that are going to happen. Like they make up things that could realistically happen. And because they've got so many of them that some of them just happen to come true. But I don't know. Maybe someone's watching these and they're like, yeah, we need to make that happen. Something like that, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, with Corona, you could technically say that Tom Clancy's The Division predicted the coronavirus. So... Because the story of Tom Clancy's The Division is basically just, there's a virus that's killing people. But the only difference is, government's got on top of coronavirus quite quickly, so. They didn't get on top of the one during um, Tom Clancy's. Haven't we already done this track? No, that was, um... What's it called? Thingy. Hey, Kate, what's up? How are you today? Um... Yeah, that was with the, um... It's a bishy, wasn't it? Will they understand it was all to stay away for the longest? Such a good song. M -m messed up generation. Uh. Ooh, charming. Are oh, you tit? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. liking this song. I like to play with my penis. Ooh. Honestly, Bullet For My Valentine really surprised me with my last album. Thank you for the posture check. Really surprised me with um, their last album. It, it, it didn't click instantly. But now that I've listened to it a couple of times, it's actually really, really good. It, it's one of those albums you have to listen to a couple of times to actually like appreciate it and realize, ah, it's a really good album. And especially when you, like, add it to a playlist of their older songs, you then realise, hmm, this is a good change. It's very, um... The new album sounds very much like... Um, who is it? Of Mice and Men. It's got a very Of Mice and Men style to it. Like, with the heavy 
Screamer. And then some normal sing in between it as well. It's, it's quite cool. It is very of my and Men style. No, because if you look at the top, it says this means war. Bullet for my Valentine. It literally says in the top right corner what the song is. <laughs> because I say it every time the song that's currently playing is in the top right corner it literally says it right in the top right corner because <laughs> every time someone asks is this a song what are you listening to it's right there <laughs> It automatically updates so you know exactly what I'm listening to at any time. So you don't have to ask the question of, oh, this is a good song, what's it called? Because it's there for you. <laughs> bye bye, asshole. <laughs> Bye bye. Yeah, you know, this one, this song gets a lot of hate because it's called Tears Don't Fall Part 2. And people are like, eh, this song's terrible. I think people just have to listen to it. It's like a Project Cars 2 and a Project Cars 3 comparison. Like, Project Cars 3 isn't Project Cars 2, but that doesn't mean it's a terrible game. It just isn't a Project Cars game. It's a weirdly named one. It's still a good game. Same with this. It's a good song. It's just not quite Tears Don't Fall Part 2. Ten thousand times I've tried. I've tried to call you. So answer me. Fuck off, Aaron. <laughs> Joke is old now. Talk to me. So answer me. <laughs> I mean, I don't really tell stories of, like, real-life shit unless they come up on stream. It's just not... Not really a thing I need to. Like, I normally tell stories about stuff that I've done, that I've seen on, like, social media and shit like that. 
think that's more appropriate for a stream than telling about stories all the time. Like, if a story comes up that kind of ties in, then sure. But, no. I don't tell. Straight up just tell stories on stream. And make me feel like I'm to blame. Welcome back, Mr. Fallen Dingo. <laughs> well, no one's forcing you to stay. No one's forcing you to stay. I mean, I've been debating and topical, topicking, talking, all stream, so... Maybe it's the fact that you're the one who's boring. It's not bringing up interesting subjects to talk about. Hmm. Didn't think of it that way, did ya? So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.